Welcome back to our series of interviews with Barry Kay on polling and the coming U.S. elections. Uh, so, Barry, if, if, if based on historical experience, based on what we're seeing now in the polls, who's going to win the election? Well, there's different yardsticks. I will tell you that, indeed, the, my favorite one um, suggests that it will be Obama, and that's based on a pattern that's been in place really during the era of television, since the end of Truman and, uh, and Roosevelt, that since the election of 1952, we've had seen a pattern of each party being in for two terms and then being out, of, out for two terms. So we saw Eisenhower win two terms, the Democrats, it wasn't Kennedy for both, but the Democrats for two terms, the Republicans. There's only been one exception, the election of 1980, um, to that particular pattern. If, if Carter had won re-election in 1980, that would have consi been consistent with the pattern. But with that exception, we've seen two, two terms in, two terms out. That would indicate that this year should be a Democratic year. And frankly, 2012 should be as well. And 2016 and 2020 will be Republican. So not only am I giving you the winner of this election, but elections into the, into the future. So what might, not, what might change that? Uh, or you think we're headed towards that direction? Well, I think we're heading to that direction. I mean, what, what, is, is, there, is there something that could happen in terms of international crisis that would change that? Look, it's interesting because Barack Obama's ability to sort of um, be, become taken seriously in a year where Hillary Clinton was thought to be the, the overwhelming favorite for the Democratic Party, what did it within the Democratic constituency, the people who, who voted in those early caucuses and primaries, was in fact the Vietnam, uh, not the Vietnam War, that I'm dating myself, the, uh, the, the Iraq War. Um, in fact, now, though, that, that, that issue probably is hurting him. That, indeed, I think Obama's strong card for November is not foreign policy or terrorism, but rather is the economy. Now, a lot of people inside the, as you could say, the more liberal progressive wing of the Democratic Party are kind of astounded at that, that the Iraq War has been such a disaster. The whole war on terror in, in terms of American foreign policy and repercussions thereof has been mostly, uh, call, uh, many people have called one of the great strategic defeats of American policy in the history of the country. How on earth does that become a plus for McCain and a negative for Obama? Oh, because not everybody thinks like the people you're describing at the moment. Well, Those the, people were very but active. But in doesn't the, the polling show a vast, vast majority of Americans uh, against the Iraq War? Most Americans now? even now would say that the, the Iraq War was a mistake and America shouldn't have gone into it. But replaying history isn't something that's on the minds of the, the, the swing voter at the moment. We are in Iraq, we being the Americans, for, for better or worse. And the question is how to ex extricate ourselves and how to deal with it. But in general, um, McCain does well on the issue because he has seen to be more experienced and more knowledgeable. Not among the, the people who supported um, Obama in the primaries will certainly still support him strongly. The question is now we're no longer talking about just Democratic primary voters, we're talking about a broader audience. And among those people, to the extent they're concerned about international politics, McCain seems to have more credibility. But are we Eco that, economics is a very different issue. But are we finding a phenomenon that if something happened, something like what happened with Kerry uh, in the last cycle? Uh, Kerry, for the whole summer before the election, barely said a word about Iraq, which one would have thought would have been Bush's vulnerability. Uh, he didn't start really attacking the Iraq war in any serious way, Bush policy in the Iraq war, seriously, until like about September. Um, with this whole idea that you can't offend this middle vote that you're trying to get over, this, these people that might go Republican, might go Democrat, you got, you got to be the patriot. You have to be the strong military guy. If you critique uh, Iraq policy too strongly, you may look weak. Are we getting some of that now with Obama? Like Obama's major uh, plank when he started off in this run was I was the guy that said no to the Iraq war. Well, we're not hearing that now. In fact, he just chose a vice president who had previously said yes to the Iraq war. Elections are one in the center. Uh, primaries are one on the fringes, left and right. Well, they're but one on the center, but they also seem to be lost on the center. I mean, I know you have the cycle of the, two, the eight years' terms, but last year, G Bush should have been extremely vulnerable, and a lot of the critique of Kerry is he lost because he only played to the center. Bush has been in the toilet bowl really since the, uh, the summer of 2005. It goes back to Hurricane Katrina and, indeed, some other events of that year. 2004, he was wasn't doing so badly. If, and, and that was why uh, Kerry lost for a whole bunch of reasons. He was not as a, it was a close election. And he, within a, a 30, 40,000 votes in, uh, in Ohio going the other way, could very well have turned that around. Uh, this is different from that. But I, I, I'm saying this because there's still plenty of people that ex feel the, uh, as, as you do on the issue. Um, Obama's strongest issue is the economy. And he is, he is, I think the, uh, the addition of, of Biden to the ticket will help somewhat, but elections normally don't turn on who the vice presidential candidate is. If Obama's going to win, it's going to be because people think that the, the econ economy is a, is a more important issue than foreign policy. But that's a very, a very easy thing to change with the Republican White House. 
that can have a drama in Georgia or a drama in Iran or a drama somewhere else, it's very easy to get foreign policy back to the front of the, the, front of the agenda. Uh, look, without so, question. So what I'm getting at is, is elections really still won on the center when you have 40, I mean, I'm, you're saying even more than 40 percent of people who have tuned out, who don't vote. I mean, uh, well, those people don't vote at all, period. Uh, but among but the people But is it because people, the election campaign is always directed towards the center? It's, that's, that's the reason the election campaigns are in a close election. We've had some decisive elections over the years as well. This one looks like it's going to be close. But um, elections are, the, the people that are concerned about winning elections play to the, the center, frequently less, less educated, less involved people, because those are the people that tend to be pivotal. The, uh, the, 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 just to elaborate this critique a little further, uh, what a lot of people are saying is what happens is when the Democrats play to the center, they lose identity. Uh, they lose, the, they lose the, that they have principles they believe in. And so now you have Obama, who was against oil drilling now, is wavering on the question of oil drilling. You had Obama, which was clearly I'm against this war, is now talking about residual forces in Iraq. That, that as, he, as, he, as you move to the center, you actually lose who you are. And, and then McCain actually winds up and before that Bush, and you've heard this in polling, I'm sure, at least there are people that know what they believe in. They have principles. You can define who they are. I mean, is part of this democratic strategy weakening them? And are we seeing a, 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 a lot of people are saying that uh, an election the Democrats could never lose, they're finding a way to lose. If people of the left, at least on the issue of Iraq, are going to vote for Nader because and because Nader is going to be a candidate again because of the fact that they think that Obama is not pure enough, they are going to be responsible for electing a Republican, just as they were responsible for voting for uh, electing George Bush in 2000. Well, I'm not suggesting. I'm not talking about a Nader vote. I think that's a separate question. I'm talking about the uh, that 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 it's difficult for people to decide be between if a, Obama and McCain start looking too closely, too alike on policy, and then it simply comes down to merely personality. Then these sort of advertising factors play in a much more. I'm, I'm not unsympathetic to your argument yeah. personally, but does, I, but this polling, what does polling tell us? About look, this? in my own personal evolution, I remember as a supporter of Gene McCarthy back in '68 and George McGovern in '72. I learned something from those campaigns. Uh, the America is probably never going to elect a candidate that I might personally like. They have to vote for somebody more moderate. If people who are pure enough to suggest that they aren't prepared to sort of water their wine a little bit. Uh, those people are responsible for electing the, the greater of the two evils rather than the lesser of the two evils if we could see No, I'm actually way. making quite a different argument. Well, the argument I'm making is that it strengthens McCain's campaign to water down Obama's uh, as someone of principle who takes strong stands rather than compromising on every issue. I, I would disagree. I would think that it strengthens Obama's campaign to be talking about the economy than to be talking about foreign policy well, today. Let's, well, let's move to that in the next segment of our interview. Let's talk about what polling tells us about people want and, and how are the candidates responding to, to the issues of the economy and the recession. Uh, please join us in the next segment of our interview with Barry Kay. <laughs>